there, I am Dr. Lalita Vakalanka. I am going to talk about today about mind, body and soul healing. I will be enumerating eight different modalities of mind, body and soul healing. I am presenting about us, our children, our family, our friends, our community and our society and everything which is visible and not visible. Who is the person in me and what is my blueprint? What shapes our personality? Is it the information or the experience? Personality has an imprint on health. Do medical tests and medical reports reveal the differences in personality? Answer is no. One should ask themselves if the personality shapes one's health. Health follows natural laws and having a personality which projects razor sharp discipline to bring wellness to all. Body is the most sophisticated machine. As the engine is the most important part of the car, so is the soul the most important part of the body. Calming the mind by meditation feeds the soul which in turn keeps us in sync all together. The first modality of mind, body and soul healing is exercise. Exercise increases the blood circulation in the body to the muscles and different organs in the body which in turn rids the body of all the toxins. We will touch on this topic again when I discuss the importance of balance in the elderly patients. The second modality is a good diet. I cannot reiterate what an important role it has to maintain one's health. It is a whole topic by itself. Most importantly, will tell you that fruits are cleansers and they should be eaten in the morning to help cleanse the body and vegetables are builders. Coming to spices, to mention a few are turmeric and ginger. Both have a high antioxidant properties. Just to mention here, I have many of my arthritis patients who improved by taking turmeric powder and I took them off their anti-inflammatory drugs. Anti-inflammatory drugs are the number one cause of kidney damage seen in the elderly patients. Secondary to indiscriminate use of these medications for pain control. The hot topic today is about protein. and how much protein one should consume. The Atkins diet in the market today, which is a high protein diet, is very bad for you. Given that our liver can store only 45 grams of carbs, if we deprive our body of glucose, then we break down the proteins for energy causing ketones to be released. Once we consume the 45 grams of carbs stored in the liver, children need a high protein diet as they are constantly growing and their demand for protein is high. Adults only need enough protein 
to help regenerate the dying cells in the body. For example, the red blood cells in our body dies every 120 days. We need green leafy vegetables like spinach greens to help rebuild the hemoglobin in the RBC. Protein detoxification takes place in the kidney by what is called as the urea cycle. One should not tax the kidney to work hard by excess protein intake. Third modality I am going to enumerate is on coconut oil. It is a myth that it is bad for you for health. Yes, it is a saturated fat, but it, is, it has a specific fat called as lauric acid. This is present only in breast milk. It has antibacterial, antifungal and antiviral properties. It's great to increase the immunity in a person. Two ways you can use it for your health benefits. One is have one teaspoon of coconut oil three times a day. Next method is called as oil pulling where you swish the oil in the mouth for 20 minutes and what that does is have the fat soluble toxins in the body bind to the coconut oil and be expelled when it is discarded from the mouth after 20 minutes. The oral cavity being the prime location for absorption and circulation which the Tufts University of dentists have realized the hidden secret of oil pulling. Another hidden secret of coconut oil is it prevents gingivitis and plaque formation. Dentists would not like this to be revealed as it will take away their business. The fourth modality is regular chiropractic care. The spinal column has to be aligned from the first cervical vertebrae till the tailbone. All the nerves emerge from the spinal foramina if aligned correctly, innovating all the organs in the body for proper functioning. The fifth modality I would like to throw some light upon is acupuncture, which helps to balance the qi in the body. Qi in Chinese medicine is what is referred to as prana in ancient Ayurvedic medicine. This is also called the life force. The sixth modality is again from the east which is regular yoga poses or asanas. This increases the endorphins in the body and also increases our one pointed focus when the asanas are being performed. It has been scientifically proven that regular yoga practice helps reduce blood pressure, stress and low black problems. Just want to mention few important poses here which is Shirsasana and Sarvangasana. Shirsasana is a pose where one stands on the head. If it is difficult to perform one can take the help of the wall to perform the Shirsasana. And the next pose is a Sarvangasana where one lies on their back and raises their feet up to their neck. And this improves the thyroid functioning in addition to giving additional benefits. 
The seventh modality is a deep breathing exercise, which is referred to as pranayama. When one takes a deep breath, they open up the small bronchioles in the lower portion of the lungs, where the oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange takes place. This helps increasing oxygenation of the tissues, which in turn rids the body of toxins. Another important thing about the breath is that it is directly connected to the mind and calms the mind on daily practice. Take deep breaths daily and do alternate nostril breathing, which are both very powerful. The alternate nostril breathing helps to balance the right brain hemisphere and the left brain hemisphere. Om chanting is again a very powerful modality. Om is the sound of the universe and that connects the whole body and is very very beneficial if one chants Om minimum three times a day. The eighth modality, lastly I would say, is the most important modality for mind, body and soul healing and that is meditation. The only way to control the mind and balance the mind, body and soul is by calming the mind by being in a meditative mode. This has got a major impact on one's health as it balances all the hormones from the pituitary gland. One has to do this for at least 20 to 30 minutes a day. Now coming to a topic which will interest most of you and that is regarding pharmaceutical drugs. I am not against them by any means except when it is not used judiciously. Patients walking in with sore throat in any urgent care these days are started on antibiotic without thinking twice or I would say as a knee-jerk reflex. They cause more harm than help. Truly speaking, only 10 to 15 percent of the patients will actually need the antibiotics. Most of them will be cured by simple remedies like salt water gargle and lemon water and extra vitamin C. Now, coming to elevation of blood pressure, there are many patients who walk in to the urgent care with slightly elevated blood pressure, which could be secondary to lifestyle or stress induced with caused by numerous reasons. They instead of being counseled and started on a diet and exercise plan are immediately started on antihypertensive medication. Elderly patients have a lot more complications with the antihypertensive medications as the half-life of the drug is increased secondary to decreased excretion of the drug from the kidneys. Another example is they are given a medication to help with the side effect caused by their initial medication. Most commonly used medication is hydrochlorothiazide for hypertension which causes elevated uric acid in some patients 
and loss of electrolytes in some patients. The normal traditional medicine would fix the problem by adding another medication like allopurinol to help with the elevated uric acid level. In my practice, I would go over and above and check the interaction of the drugs the patient is on and try finding a suitable drug. If a patient is con conducive and receptive, I would try all the above modalities as I just enumerated before I start them on any allopathic drug. Now, I would like to close with the most important topic which will improve the quality of life in the elderly patient. This is falls in an elderly patient which is very high. That there are two reasons for this. One being hypotension caused by over treating the elderly patients. Number two is the patients have improper light in their house and the chances of them slipping on rugs or the slippery floor is very high. I would like to give an example of one patient I had seen in my office who came with complaints of frequent falls. She was in her 80s. All I did was ask her why and when she was started on a blood pressure medication. She was totally clueless. I discontinued the calcium channel blocker and in my follow-up visit with her, her symptoms had completely improved. Coming to another very important cause of fall in the elderly is the posterior columns in the body carry the signals to maintain our balance. As I mentioned earlier, I would talk about exercise. At this point, I would like to en enumerate a little bit more about exercise. Exercise in the elderly to strengthen their leg muscles help to prevent falls. I recommend a set of balancing exercises which should be done daily by the elderly patients to prevent falls by increasing their stability. If they lose their balance and fall, they commonly sustain a hip fracture which decreases the quality of life and make them dependent on others. Prevention is better than cure. Final note I would like to speak about wellness being oneness. Cycle of life is sun and the moon, bud and the flower, flower and the fruit, fruit and the seed, seed and the soil soil and the earth. Lesson here is that when something is joined, it is always connected, whether seen by us or not. Cycle of life, health, light, connected to darkness. When illness happens, it is understood as darkness due to disconnection with nature. We should understand that we are from nature and that is when we connect. Just like how a baby is represented. Thank you. Once again, this is Dr. Lalita Vakalanka.